Hi everyone. Um, uh, we are very pleased to uh, introduce to you um, uh, Nicole Kruger from uh, Zurich. Uh, she has had an interesting library uh, career and also a philosophical uh, career. Um, she uh, was a bit of an OER skeptical, but now she turned out to be an OER enthusiastic. And um, well, let's hear it from herself. Thank you so much, Monique, and also to Paula for the invitation to speak here today. Um, I'm very happy to, to share my experience in libraries with promoting OER. I will share my screen firstly. And please let me know if you see it in full screen. Do you? Right, yeah. great. So I want to uh, show three measures in particular, which we use at ZHAW, ZAW, Zurich University of Applied Sciences to promote OER. And this is um, building up an OER community among university teachers at our university. Then organizing an OER projects, project with students so we can get them in touch with OER really early on in their career before they get into practices in teaching or in companies um, where communication or teaching cultures are already in place. And then thirdly, uh, organizing discussions or conferences and workshops on a national level in Switzerland to broaden uh, the discussion and also to promote OER even more in other universities and across universities. But firstly, um, about the setting of our, our OER team, we are at Zurich University of Applied Sciences, which has three sites in Winterthur, which is the largest site, Zurich and Wedenswil. And we have about 14,000 students and about 3.5 thousand employees. And we, with our OER team, we are four people. Only lately, since uh, August 2020, the team uh, grew. And before it was one person, now we are four. And we already yeah, grew in manpower and woman power, so we can really organize some projects. We are situated at the university library. We were new at the university in 2020, so we didn't have any connections to the departments, uh, to the teachers there, to e-learning centers, etc. But what we could build upon was an existing OER policy, which was then already in place. It was mainly pursued by the head of the university library, but um, then written and worked out together with the Commission for Education and the Rectorate. And this OER policy states that it expects from um, members of staff, especially from teachers of the university to publish their learning materials, their teaching materials under CC BY or CC BY as a license. Still, we had this policy that we didn't have our own network. We didn't have measures then firstly to, to put this policy into place. So this was our first attempt uh, when our team was growing to reach out to the departments. And we contacted the e-learning centers, MOOC teams, video teams. And through them, we got invitations uh, to lunch lectures, coffee lectures or other um, formats. Uh, in the department testing, testing, to introduce testing. OER and what it is, um, not really to teach at first, but only to talk about what, what are the benefits of OER, what is the connection between copyright, OER, and the Creative Commons. So to, to just spread the word and get out the idea of OER was our first step. We got a lot of attention and it was really great and we got positive feedback not only on OER but also that we established ourselves our team as um, 
copyright librarians and team where teachers could address uh, the copyright questions. So I think this might have been um, some part of the success, if I want to call it like this, but um, to also promote our team uh, under the frame of copyright uh, questions and issues and this that this is closely connected to OER. So we built up know-how in, in the library team, in this OER team on copyright creative commons and also on publication of OER and offered classes. We, through this um, topic of copyright, we were also allowed to publish a course um, on copyright creative commons and OER in the central Moodle course on um, digital learning for the university. So we could like sneak in into this Moodle course, which was visited by all uh, teachers that in Corona times needed to learn more about digital teaching and digital skills and education. And through this door, we, we could inform them about OER and the creative commons. But um, when we had this network and we really also, I said, we had good feedback uh, on the idea of OER. Everyone seemed to be very open and positive, but still when we counted the OER that were created and published after half a year, we didn't see that everyone started publishing their, their materials suddenly and uh, in a large scale. So we asked some teachers, how could we support you? Wouldn't you send us your materials that you anyways use in your classes? We could um, check them and make recommendations where to publish them if they have to, um, if you have to do some um, changes and so on. So but then they were <laughs> little, like uh, hesitant and said, I don't know, I, I don't think I really have any material that are worth publishing, I mean, to worth sharing and they were kind of shy to, to publish their materials. So we thought it would be very good to get the, the teachers in connection among each other and to get them into a discussion and have good examples what others do and show, um, show the teachers which were in our network um, how they could pursue with the, the topic of OER and really get into practice. So that was our idea to, to build up the, the community. And we just simply created a Teams a virtual environment because Teams, MS Teams was really used, heavily used uh, in the departments as a communication channel. And we didn't want to risk that yeah, our channel, our community channel was neglected because it required a certain single login and so on. So we put our community in the place where people anyways communicated. And we wrote emails to our, our contacts and simultaneously invited them to the community channel and to an event, which we organized as a kickoff event with an invited speaker. We had a little budget to invite some speaker from another university from the ORCA network in uh, North Rhine, Westphalia and also to um, organize some foods and drinks. So we invited uh, all of our network and it was a really great success. Um, firstly, we also um, recorded some voices of the community in podcasts and video interviews and they recommended OER and also being part of the community. They stressed how important it is to connect on the topic and that creating e-learning materials is quite, it needs quite an effort, but to publish them is just a small step. <laughs> this was what uh, one of our uh, colleagues uh, emphasized. I'm not so sure if this is true, but uh, he was very positive about uh, OER and really promoted this. And these are really important. I mean, they are teachers themselves. They are from the departments and it was really great support that they were ready to have these interviews with us. So we wrote blog posts also to reach people we didn't have in our network before to make them, to let them know about the community and the kickoff event. So in the end, we had 
50 participants from all the departments. Um, and besides the really great keynote talk of um, the colleague we invited from Northern Westphalia, we had three presentations from teachers from ZAV. They presented their OER and why they were motivated or why they uh, published their learning materials, their teaching materials. And this was really, really beneficial for us as an OER team to, to show these examples to, to other um, teachers, but also to hear the discussion which arose because other participants from the departments, they asked how much time did you invest and who, why, um, what about the legal questions and did you get any funding and wouldn't it be possible to have some funding and so on. So this we noted down and <laughs> we really, um, I mean, this was really good insight into the questions and um, ideas um, also into the motivation of the teachers. So this was really great. And we sent out a little snack pack because it was an online event. I forgot to mention, we couldn't make it on site because of Corona measures, but still uh, we really enjoyed this event. And today we have 175 people in the network and we communicate our topics and um, new um, teaching classes or events or projects and so on. But they also share their OER, which they create. They just publish it there and get feedback and comments from their colleagues. So this is really, really nice. We have to keep the conversation going. I mean, this is something we have to do. It's not working all by itself. We sometimes push people that we know uh, they published something we ask them, won't you share this in the community as well? And also we keep um, to, I mean, we organize that at least two posts per month should be published in the, in the news section of the, of the community so that other people can react there. The community also supported us very strongly with another project, which is the second, uh, topic I want to mention here. This is our OER project with students. This was from December 21 to May 22. We had a competition on OER among students and we raised project funding from the Sustainable Impact Program at ZHAV. And like this, we could also strengthen the connection between OER and sustainability. I think it's very important to not promote or to regard OER as measure or as aim in itself, but through OER, we can reach certain aims like open education, new didactical formats, sustainability also, and lifelong learning. We can support certain aims that are very important for the society. And I think it's very important to stress this connection. So um, by applying for this funding in the Sustainable Impact Program, we could do this. There is especially a connection um, among OER and the SDG 4, the Sustainable Development Goal 4, goal four which is um, aiming at ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education and wants to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So there's a very clear connection to OER. But with our project, we wanted to stress that OER can even have a stronger connection to all 17 SDG by publishing materials on the SDG. We can make them more visible, showcase problems or um, emphasize problems or even solutions related to the SDG and make them a stronger part of the curricula or, or teaching scenarios. So we, in, we invited all the students uh, at ZHAV of all the eight departments to produce their own material, be it presentation, a paper, poster, video, podcast, images, whatever, 
they should produce something that was related to one, at least one of the SDG. And they could, should hand it in and this material should be published under a Creative Commons license. And we reached out to students through certain student groups uh, on social media and sustainability groups, also in some club. <laughs> we were invited to some evening e event um, with a kicker tables um, competition and could promote our uh, event and competition there. So we reached out to the students, but um, the teachers were the most important support for us when they handed out our post um, our postcards and stickers to their students. They invited us when we requested <laughs> to their seminars and lectures so we could introduce um, the competition to the students. And even more important probably than this five minutes of input where that the teachers signaled that they supported this project and that they thought it worthwhile to take part. Also, um, the community was very important when we searched for people for the judging panel, because we as an OER team could judge the materials by the copyright um, questions and so on, if they were correct OER, but we couldn't judge them under the aspect of content and subject and if they were correct information. So this project really aimed at reaching out to students and to getting them in touch with OER really early on. And it was great to have this experience to sh see how students work with materials, how they, what they know about copyright, what attitude they have to sharing and creative commons. And actually, they were not very sensitive about questions um, on copyright. So we really raised like question marks around why can't I publish this and so on. So we had lunch lectures with brown bag lunches where we discussed with them their materials. They could ask questions and we introduced to them the idea of Creative Commons because I think this was really a barrier for, for them to take part in this competition because they had no idea about Creative Commons and so on. So they first had to inform themselves and we yeah, try to to motivate them by, by some food extras. Also went around with pastries across the campus and so on. So it was great to be in touch with the students and to talk with them about SDG and Creative Commons. And in the end, we had 20 uh, handed in materials, of which four were nominated for the prizes. They were really great materials, a video, a podcast, a poster and paper. Really rich materials and really worth publishing. And they really, um, I'm very happy that they won something and gained something for their work. We could publish 10 materials out of 20 on Zenodo, or the other set issues with persons displayed or copyright issues or even something regarding the content when the judging panel from the department said I wouldn't publish this. <laughs> it needs some more work. But altogether 10 OER were created uh, and put out on the web for being shared. Here are some impressions of our uh, ceremony, the awards ceremony, and we also had a round table discussion among the students, some of the students and some of the teachers um, of our community about creating materials during seminars and putting them out on the web. What would be the issues on that? Would it be too much workload? Would the students wish such form of um, exams? by creating materials that they are judged and they get their certificates for the seminar and so on. So this was really great insights and also again great support by our community members. Late last point, I have five more minutes. Um, I want to show just some quick insights into how we 
also go on the national level and try to push the topic of OER even broader beyond the CETAVI, because we know that many universities, they don't have OER teams with such a strong number. Often OER teams in Switzerland are connected to e-learning centers and the topic is, or sometimes also at the university library, but they don't have this strong um, number of people. So we really try to support the topic of OER also on a Swiss wide level. And we are involved in a project, Swiss universities project on digital skills. This is the umbrella um, of this funding line. And our project module is dealing with creating and animating an OER community. So we had a conference in 21, this was last year. And we really had great speakers like Lorna Campbell from University of Edinburgh and Open Edge. She's really well renowned and very great person. And also Cable Green from Creative Commons. We asked them to speak at the National Conference of Switzerland on OER. It was a rather small event because Switzerland is not so huge and the topic of OER is not that present here. I hope they weren't very disappointed, but we, we were very, very happy that they uh, talked and made workshops in the conference. Also Alistair Creelman with a whole team of four people organizing a net, I mean, a workshop within the conference on, and he's from open network learning and yeah, we were really content with um, the panel here. This year we will have a creator workshop for teachers from all over Switzerland. Eight weeks workshop where First, we meet in Zurich to connect and meet and network. And then everyone creates his or her OER um, and is connected rather uh, through online meetings. But yeah, this is just about to happen in October. And we also included in, in another course, which has 10 topics uh, over 10 weeks. And we cover the topic of OER there. Yeah, this was uh, some insight, I hope, into the work of our OER team. I'm not alone. As I mentioned, we are four people and also you saw the picture of our team in the beginning. So uh, I don't want to take the credits alone. And now I would be happy to answer your questions. Thanks a lot, Nicole. It was really interesting, really, really. And uh, thanks for sharing all of these. I have a lot of questions myself, but I would prefer to leave the floor to uh, our members first. If you already have some questions uh, here from the audience, it would be great for you to, to open your microphone. Monique, you can go first, sure. <laughs> Yes, I, I have a question. It, it was a great talk and um, I, I've learned a lot of ideas. I've been um, um, uh, noting, uh, making notes <laughs> so we can organize a lot of, at our university. Uh, you have, yes, you had some great ideas. I wonder, you, you have a team of four people. Are they all librarians or are there also uh, educational specialists in your team? Um, we have two librarians and two, I mean, one was educated for being a teacher in the, in high school, Yeah. but he skipped, I mean, he, he mentioned that he was, while preparing his first lectures for the classes, he got more interested in finding materials from others and sharing and um, how he can organize his uh, teaching by reusing other materials so he really mm. early on he um went to the oer professional area so he i think he i don't know if he ever was a teacher but he was educated for being a teacher okay okay yeah and yeah another colleague is a cross entry person from um rather technical area okay yeah that's very important too <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we are um, thinking of uh, of forming a group ourselves, and um, uh, we mustn't forget that 
technical person. <laughs> yes, but we also want to include an educational um, a member, a member of the educational department. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. I think also that's a great idea because my colleague who was educated as a teacher, he also organized a workshop here in the university on open education, not only OER, but how you can use make use of OER in setting up new scenarios in your teaching. And I think there, I mean, I don't know if I could have done it um, by reading a lot and so on, but he has his experience from being a teacher. And I think this might be important as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We will keep in contact about mm -hmm. all things. Thank right. you. Any other question? Chris, yes, go ahead. Hi, Nicole, thanks so much uh, for that. And uh, I'm just, I'm curious about actually that initial um, OER policy that you talked about right at the right at the beginning. And I'm just curious if you could tell us a little bit more about how you uh, went about creating that policy and who was involved um, and whether um, it's something that will be revised in the future based on your experience um, building this amazing community uh, since publishing that. Thank you. Um, I wasn't here when the policy was published, but okay. um, the head of the library who initiated making this policy, because she's also a very strong OER enthusiast, um, she's still here and she shared some of her um, experience with creating this OER policy. I think she um, made first, based on her network, she talked about creating this policy and then she involved certain stakeholders like um, this com commission on education um, first went into their meeting and talked about OER and uh, presented the idea of making this policy and then gathered some of the people from this uh, com uh, from this uh, working group there and to work out the OER policy together. So she didn't just write it down and presented it, but she included very many people of different areas from e-learning centers. They have a working group as well across the departments. So they somehow were part from the beginning of writing this policy and then they could stand behind it when it was discussed in the, in the university uh, presidency or rectorate to, to sign this. And what I forgot to mention, our president uh, of the university, he's also part of our OER community. So maybe, I mean, we have a really strong support from high levels of the, the university and the university library. And this is really some luxury for us. So we really can enjoy <laughs> our work because we also have strong people in the back, which helps us argumenting. And, Perfect. Thanks very much. Mm, thank you. Nick, you're next. Mm. Hello. Um, sorry, I was late. It is a bank holiday in the UK. They're actually on holiday, so and the kids are here on their computers. So um, if I'm distracted, that's why. Mm. I, I was just interested, uh, I, I did miss the beginning, Nicole, but at one point you suggested that only 10 of the resources went up on Zenodo because I think some copyright issues, but quality, you mentioned quality as well. I suppose I'm interested in what are the um, criteria for, you know, su sufficient quality for an OER? Because that's something we talk about quite a lot, you know, and the people are concerned about that it's not sufficient quality. And we sort of try and downplay that and say, well, you know, it doesn't have to be really polished necessarily as an OER. So I did notice on your policy that there are some, there's a checklist for OER quality aspects, but it's in German only. I don't speak German, so maybe I'll, I'll be interested in learning a bit more about what the quality sort of considerations are. Hmm. Uh, so actually, we don't have a lot about quality regarding teachers OER because we they have an employment at ZIV and they are checked for their quality. They are researching their areas, so they are the experts and they can know themselves what is a quality to publish an OER. So this we don't check and we don't make a checklist um, 
on the quality. In our checklist, which is connected to the OER policy, at the moment we are revising this, but there are some didactical things which you can consider before publishing an OER, or also some questions concerning the format, that it's shareable and that it's not a proprietary format and so on. But regarding students OER, I think this is something else because they are still learning and um, maybe it would be not dangerous, but it wouldn't be positive if they publish something on the web, which is uh, not correct. So the, the teachers there, they can still say here, um, I would enhance this or you shouldn't publish this because there, there's some wrong information in it or even from the formal perspective if citations are missing or something then or if it's sloppy work which I sometimes <laughs> mentioned this is too sloppy I would uh, revise this then the students can be um, saved from some yeah, yeah. okay that, yeah thanks that, that makes sense because um, there's been a lot of discussion here I mean I haven't been that closely involved recently with OER but a lot of discussion around co-production as we say with students and teachers so is, is, is that something that you might you explore as well you know actually creating these things together with a with a with a teacher and with a student working together yeah we didn't do this yet but um we are thinking about it because now we learned a lot about the wishes of the students they want to create materials and publish this and this is um a good way for the future to to have stronger OER community or people that really practice OER because when they are used to this during their studies and they learn it there, why should they stop when they actually are employed at the university or even in the company um, when they have a communication um, tasks there? So this is something we are um, looking forward to, but we don't have any experience there yet. I mean, I think this is the way to go, really, uh, because the students are motivated to do this. And if it happens in the class, the teacher might not have that much of extra work to do. I mean, it's part of the learning and teaching process and this could work, but I, I don't know. Any other question from the audience? Otherwise I would uh, ask mine. <laughs> First of all, thank you for your questions because uh, I shared them and uh, my list is uh, shorter now. Uh, the first one that I would like to ask you, Nicole, is related to the language. So was there any required, because you already answered about the format and I also think that it's not easy to ask uh, uh, teachers or students to work with a specific format for every kind of content. So well done again because this is something that I think we should always focus on and it's not easy. We learned also in our annual community that is not always doable. So thank you for keeping an eye on the format. But about the language, did you ask any, any specific, was there any requirement about the language or um, anyone was free to publish in uh, uh, German or English or French, I don't know. Um, in this student competition, we asked for materials in German or English explicitly because we needed to be able to check that. <laughs> and even if we are in Switzerland, we are not that savvy in, in French or Italian, unfortunately here in Zurich area. So yeah, this was mentioned that English or German would be possible. I mean, if they want to uh, we always invited if they, I mean, we gave them formats which were accepted because we also needed to be able to open them and check them. And also the languages, we asked them if you need other formats, if you need other languages, please contact us. So then we would, I could have checked, but it was all the entries were made in German and English. Thank you for, for that. And, yeah, uh, and we really had English entries, so this was good that we opened up in that way, not only for the yes, for our yeah. like mother tongues. Yes. Uh, another thing that I wanted to quickly comment on, if there are no other raised hands so far, is related to uh, teachers who are shy at the beginning 
And in your case, I mean, I see, uh, I, I've been listening to your experience and your, um, uh, the experience in your university as a, a, good, a very good example um, of how things can work when you have uh, stakeholders committed. You talked about uh, the Commission of Education and the President, which is very helpful, of course, but it's not enough. And I think that all the uh, galaxy of opportunities that you were able to build in order to promote uh, OER uh, was really helpful um, to, to make teachers and students feel comfortable in sharing. But I understand that it's a slow process also in your case. So it, I can only imagine uh, the other people here in the room where they are in a context where commitment from the high level is not uh, as large as, is, uh, as it is in your case. And I wanted to, to thank you also for highlighting that it is important to use OER as something that can work mm, better, like OER are a mean, not a goal in themselves. You talked about sharing content uh, through OER. And uh, I think that this is uh, very, very important, most of all for the SDGs. Uh, I wanted to ask you one last thing uh, related to the OER Creator Workshop Series, because uh, this is a very interesting, and I think that this can be very helpful for also for our community. Maybe a couple of questions. First of all, if it is possible for you to share more about it, because uh, it's a good practice, maybe that other members can adapt to their own context. If you have something ready in English, which doesn't ask you more than uh, the work that you already did. But the question is, which is the effort in, uh, let's say, a range of hours for participants? <laughs> because this is key for them <laughs> to be involved and to go from the beginning till the very end of the process, I think. Hmm. Yeah, that's, um, we didn't calculate this in detail, but one, I mean, the first workshop will be in Zurich, so they have to travel to Zurich first and then be part of a whole day workshop, which is really a lot. <laughs> but we don't only include the OER part. I mean, this is the most important, but also accessibility will be one option to deal with this, to make your materials accessible for people with vision or hearing disease or uh, not disease, um, impairments. So um, they have various options. We also have an e-learning expert from ETH Zurich. So maybe it is attractive for people that anyways deal with their making their materials um, fit for an e-learning scenario. And, but Creative Commons and OER will be the main focus. And we invite them for lunch and have a social event again and so on. So maybe I, we hope it's very attractive for them, but there they have a full day um, to invest into this workshop. The next weeks will be working on their own OER. So they work on their materials as they might anyways have done, but we support them and have um, meetings on a voluntary basis so they can uh, uh, get in touch with us and communicate, network, or just ask the questions. In the middle, we have one online meeting with the experts where there are breakout rooms with a certain topics and they can again learn more, ask more questions. And in the end, we will have a half day workshop where we publish the materials together and like celebrate leaving out and letting the OER free for everyone to reuse. And then again, we'll have a nice lunch or something. So it's quite a lot of investment, but for people that anyways wanted to make some material and want to learn more either about, I mean, from e-learning experts, video experts, accessibility experts or OER experts, it's a chance to, to make this in a compact format and not to learn everything by themselves and look up things on the web and so on. So we hope to attract some some users and some course participants. Well, that's wonderful. And it's also interesting from the networking perspective because uh, you can 
learn from other participants. And after the, the end of the workshop, you know who to ask questions. <laughs> so well done again. Thank you for sharing this. Monique, you have your hands raised. Go ahead. You are still muted, sorry. Uh, I have one um, remark and one uh, question. Uh, remark. Um, I like it uh, to work with students and OER. That's also an example of open pedagogy. And so you're uh, connecting the open uh, educational resources with uh, uh, open pedagogy. Uh, that's what I like. And the second uh, uh, the question, uh, what um, software do you use for um, your e-learning materials? Is, is it also open source software or? Um, right now we don't have a repository for publishing or creating OER. We are still um, dealing with questions around this. I mean, this is uh, also a work in process, but we don't have, I mean, we don't suggest any software for creating videos. I mean, we only suggest which formats they should have, or yeah, we also have some departments which are in life sciences or um, the School of Engineering, which do a lot with Markdown and Jupyter Notebooks and GitHub and so on. So there we would maybe get people in touch when if they have questions on, on publishing on these platforms, we would connect the teachers because there we don't have that much experience ourselves. Okay. But regarding uh, videos or like podcasts or other materials, we don't have a software to, to create this with. Okay, but, but do you have an, uh, a knowledge clip um, a studio or something? No. No, you don't. That, it would be interesting to hear more about this. What, what is this? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because we are, ha we are having one. So uh, <laughs> now, now I feel uh, the luxury of it. <laughs> Can you explain what it is? Yeah, yeah, because we, we have a professional studio where... Um, um, teachers, but also students can um, uh, record their own uh, knowledge clips and podcasts. So, um, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I assumed it was on every uh, university, but uh, it is not, as mm. I understand. So we have some video studios at the departments, but yeah, this is not, not in our realm, like not in the OER sovereignty or something <laughs> they they deal with stuff at the departments and the e-learning centers probably but i'm not sure that each department has this so it's really good to for you to have this in a, in a central space where everyone can use this also the students yeah 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 so thank you yeah yeah we, we should uh, make use of this yeah thank you any other question for Nicole. Well, in case I think that uh, people can always reach out to you, right, Nicole, and ask you later on. Absolutely. Would you be willing to, to share uh, your presentation, adding a link to the meeting notes so that we can have it uh, yeah. also for participants? And uh, if you are happy to, to share it more broadly, I can add the link to it to the uh, YouTube recordings of your webinar when it okay. will be ready. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank Thanks again very much for sharing your experience with us. And thank you all for the questions. And uh, thank you, Monique, for taking care of this uh, series so well of our Under the Spotlight webinars. Okay. Yes, yes, I, I think the next one will be Chris. Exactly. <laughs> Are you Chris. aware of it, uh, Chris? <laughs> I am, I am, I am, yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm looking yeah, forward yeah. To it. Thanks very much for, for inviting me, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you.